Assalamu alaikum dear viewers, peace be upon you all. Welcome to our show on Imam Hussain TV where we are discussing several aspects of our shura that we can learn from. The word legend is used several times, sometimes used very very loosely, sometimes used with a purpose. One of the biggest aspects of our shura is the legacy that Imam left behind for us that still exists today. Today we're going to discuss how this has actually happened. Why is it that over a thousand years have passed and the memory of this event still does not leave the minds of people or the hearts of people no matter what atrocities they face. Joining us to discuss this topic is Sheikh Ali Marsh, Sayyid Mohsin Shah, Imran Datu and Brother Tahir Adil. Sheikh, there is that famous narration of the Messenger of God, peace be upon him and his family, where he speaks about this flame in the heart of the believer that will never ever die out. Why is it that the flame of Imam Hussein in particular is something that is never ever going to die out? Because several great people have passed and sometimes their memories aren't as strong. But when it comes to Imam Hussein, we see the images of people that are flocking to his grave to pay him honor. Why is it that this man, his legacy has survived for so long? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد This issue goes back to when the Imam عليه السلام was given two options and that's what he said عليه السلام بين السلة والذلة I was given the option of either to be killed, slaughtered, or face humiliation. And far away from us, humiliation. So the Imam السلام, taught the next generation, the humanity, the forthcoming um, people on this planet Earth that do not accept humiliation at all and be strong and faithful and do not surrender to the tyrants that's what the imam السلام, did and went for when he said that i'm um inshallah an irani qatila it was allah's wills that i'll be martyred on the land of karbala so clearly the imam stated the goals and obje objectives of ashura that there's no surrender to the tyrants. And that's why we see today many people would rise and against their governments. And that was the, the, the foundation of those uh, revolutions and revolts, that they would rise against their tyrants. Otherwise, this wasn't before the Imam alayhi salam, you know, in the time of Pharaoh, Pharaoh that people uh, submitted and surrendered to Pharaoh and his uh, ruthless and cruel and tyrant leadership. And they served him and they built the pyramids as a result. But the Imam alayhi salam did not accept the falsehood. He rejected the batil, but accepted the haq and the truth. Nothing but the truth. And he, of course, gave everything he had in the cause of Allah, even his infant, even he left his family on the plains of Karbala um, while the enemies were still you know, chasing those women and children of Al-Bayt after his martyrdom. So the Imam السلام, was clear about this fact that the one should not submit or surrender to those who do not wish to have the path of right and righteousness to be uh, established. So only follow those who are with Salatul Mustaqim, the right path. And we say it in every day in the uh, Salah of Wajib, five times a day, mm -hmm. at least uh, ten times, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Uh, ten times, that we ask Allah to guide us towards the right path. And that's what the Imam Hussein Salam sacrificed for, to guide the hum humanity and the human beings towards the right path. Mm. Um, Brother Imran, um, we use the word legend quite loosely 
mainly in a sporting context um, in, in the current day and age. And um, when I look at the story of Ashura, we clearly know from history that bodily Imam Hussein was, was, was torn into pieces as were his family. Yet he is still ever alive today, maybe more than ever. What is it about him that actually has made him alive today, even though bodily he clearly was gone? Yeah, I think um, uh, it's it's uh, it's a good point when you put it into perspective like that. So I mean, it, like you know, you can use um, the term legend for him in a way because what the term actually means is somebody who still leaves a legacy behind, yeah. leaves uh, something behind. And um, it's what he actually stood for. So if you look at what he stood for, he stood for uh, justice. He stood for haq, um, for humanity. And there's so many you can you can you can list, uh, you know, th different bullet points. After one after the other, uh, you know, saying what he stood up for, he could patience. It was loyalty, humanity, sacrifice. Um, but all in all, all in all, it was to save the religion of Islam. Yeah, it was done uh, for the love of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It was done, um, and it was done purely for that. So, um, again, if you bring it down to our, uh, when we were discussing about the intentions um, yes. in, the, in the previous episodes, uh, when um, I also made a point that you know, if someone has. Uh, l just bringing you back to the exact point what I said about the voice, that if somebody has, doesn't have a, the best voice but has the purest of intention, they will go further, as you know, the whole world will uh, know about them rather than somebody with the best voice. So in the same way, Imam Hussain's intention was so pure, so pure, that even though on the, um, uh, you know, it, if you look at it on a, on, on a plain level, it l may, may look like he was defeated because it was his head that was severed, it was his head and the companion's head that was put on the spears. But till today, why is it that his name is in every household? Why? There must be a reason for it, right? And it was 100% because of that intention and the reason why uh, he did what he did. And it was for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the numerous amount of things he stood for, they all resonate in our houses, in our homes, in our, you know, in our upbringing t till today because of that intention mm -hmm. he had. And that's why um, we still, uh, you know, uh, kind of his legacy lives mm -hmm. on really. Absolutely. And Brother Tahir, as someone who remembers his legacy and keeps it going through the, to, through the form of poetry, um, we know there are several ways to remember uh, the Imam and, and the tragedy. How, what's the importance of poetry from your personal perspective of keeping the, uh, this legacy alive? So po poetry in, in its essence is a reminder. Yes. Um, so the power of words triggers a reminder in the minds of people. And without poetry, sometimes you, get, you have a straightforward narrative mm. uh, that doesn't really tap into the emotions or, or the resilience behind every person. So when you go through poetry, or whether it's recited in a manner or spoken word, you, you tap into that emotion. Mm. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't the first way Imam was remembered was through poetry? Was through poetry. The, his grandfather didn't say recite a lecture first, they said bring me the poets. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it works twofold because you've got that reminder, which is the narrative, but you also have the emotion which is closely tied to the tragedy. And like you said, uh, going back and echoing the points made by the Sheikh and Amran, um, a legacy is something you leave for others to follow. Mm. And that's exactly what Imam Hussain did. His principal stand was unlike other sacrifices and not to undermine other sacrifices. It's because the people he carried with him as well. So not only was he principal, but the people he carried with him were principal. Mm. Whether they, they were elderly men, young children, he gave us examples. So if a child comes and says, Imam Hussain was infallible, I can't do what he done. But his children done what he done. True. And if an old elderly man comes and goes, I have no energy. But you know, there's people like Habib ibn Mubahur who had no energy. Mm -hmm. There were el elderly men who were willing to sacrifice mm -hmm. themselves, travel all the way to Karbala to sacrifice themselves. People come and say, I've had no status. And then there's freed slaves that fought with Omar. So you've got these people that come from different demographics and different age groups and different parts of the family and companionships um, that are examples for us. So that legacy encompasses, encompasses the whole thing. Mm. Uh, and that's an example for all of mm. us, really. Uh, Sayyid Muslim, on a, on a practical level, tell us the importance of Sayyid Zainab in ensuring the legacy of Imam continues. Oof. The reason we have Karbala is because of Sayyid Zainab. Yeah, hands down. You know, I, I asked a scholar once, I don't even mention his name, said Amar, I asked Sayyid Amar, and I said, what is it, why, why did they forget Ghadir? And why have they not forgotten Karbala? Mm. And he said, Sayyid Zainab is the difference. Oh. 
and he said that it was so vital. Her, her, if there was no Sadie Zain, we would have forgotten Karbala as well. It was because of her and her stance to revolt against the oppressors and to revolt against those who killed her brother uh, and her family and her, her sons and her, her brothers and her, her nephews. Because of that, we still have Karbala today. The first ever Majalis that were done was in Damascus. As soon as they were freed, yes. for one week they held Majalis and they called the people and, and they told them the stories of Karbala and what happened and recited eulogies. So everything that we have today, it all comes down to say the Zainab. Mm. And uh, I mean, my words don't justify her actions. And, and, and I think, you know, it's been 1400 years since Karbala. And inshallah, it'll be another 1400 years and we'll continue to remember Karbala. And it's all down to say the Zainab. Mm. So she played the most pivotal role in, in rev reviving and, and, and making this, remembering the story and, and continuing this legacy. Mm. So we'll never be forgotten. Mm. And I think practically, when someone does something so great, it's very important for the people around to tell people about it. Um, when you look at how Ashura is commemorated, it's not enough for it to be just a personal sense of mourning. You have to tell people about it. Um, Ashura is a very, very public, outward-facing expression of religion um, versus a more internal, more like fasting, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and on on this uh, on this topic of uh, the legacy of Imam Hussein, as per usual with the tradition of this show, we would like to ask Brother Dahi to recite a few verses of poetry regarding the legacy of Imam Hussein. This poem is titled, A Story of Sacrifice. Let me tell you a story, a story that is repeated every year, a story many know well, a story that resonates, a story passed on by human tongue, written, painted, sketched and sung. Well, if you don't know it, let me give you a synopsis. This is a s story of sacrifice, and not just any s sacrifice. Sacrifices have been mentioned all throughout history, ancient or modern civilizations. Some are myths, some are stories, some are tales, others are real life events told a million times over. The famous prophet Jesus, for example, Till this day we find a figurine of a cross planted on the chest of a passerby in every corner of the world. But what makes a great sacrifice is the result that follows. And for many, this is a tale that resonates like an annual tide with tears and emotions surfacing at the shore. A yearly guest, a visitor, that when the days come, he knocks on the door and welcomes us in. But who is this visitor? And what kind of sacrifice did he make that the earth and all its days cannot forget him? This man once stood upon the burning sands of time in a distant land sketched upon his eyes. This man once stood upon the burning sands of time in a distant land upon his eyes stretched a tale for eternity. He traveled the distance with a handful of friends and a handful of family, brothers, sisters, sons and mothers and even newborn additions and he laid them out like a pauper with his last remaining currency. He stood and stood and they took and took until he had nothing more to give in this life than life itself. Yet life demanded more until he had more fingers to count than loved ones. Not spared like Abraham from the fires with a hailstorm of arrows. Not spared like the throat of Ishmael, no sheep to replace his young one. There was no river to float a baby across like baby Moses in the Nile. No, this time the river was the villain of the story not spared like the people of Israel. When the sea was split open and the people fled to safety, no, this time an army of thousands swallowed them. And those who remained were paraded to the point where 40 years in the wilderness would have been sweeter. And neither was there an ark to save them like the ark of Noah. And neither was there an ark to save them like the ark of Noah, two by two. No, this man was left alone, drowning in his sacrifice. There was no hero to save this story. No David against Goliath, no King Arthur, no Hercules, no miracles to become or to be. So no healing words could say, nor love between teardrops sway the value of this sacrifice. How much this sacrifice is worth cannot be quantified, for he gave it all. Not for a throne or wealth or gold or power or anything that can be sold. He gave it all for something that most men would not comprehend. 
where philosophers would fail to follow the trail of thoughts to its end and equations cannot simplify nor solve by algorithms. He gave it all for something that cannot be measured in this earth. Nor beyond the layered sky, he gave it all for the pleasure of the Most High. And in return, he's become immortalized. Immortalized, and that, my friends, is the story of Hussein. Beautiful. Thank you. And a clear link to the issue of legacy and immortality. Um, last part of the show, Sheikh, looking at this is from a historical perspective, the journey from Karbala to Kufa and then to, to Syria. Um, Sometimes in, in history, like the Ashur itself, something tragic has to happen for a legacy to survive. Could it be argued that without the tragedy of the captives being taken from city to city, without this captivity, would the message of Imam Hussein have actually got through to us today? Um, I think I've mentioned these two statements from Imam al Hussein alayhi salam that he said in Medina, Sha'Allah and Yarani Qatila, wa Sha'Allah and Yarahunna Sabaya. Mm. So they're both linked to see himself to be slaughtered and, and, and killed in Karbala and also his family to be taken as captives. They're both linked to each other because who broadcasts the, uh, the calamities and the Masaib of Karbala? Uh, it's the one who survived yes. the battlefield and that is. Um, the family and the children because they, they killed all the men and even the, the infant mm. although the Imam as Sajjad was uh, surviving and that was a miraculous to be honest it's a miracle that the Imam survived and because he is Hujatullah and, and he is the Imam after Imam al Hussein so Allah kept him alive otherwise he's been, been killed definitely and many attempts were made even in Kufa and afterwards to kill the Imam but they failed um, so of course, no. I mean, uh, the family was. Um, I mean, the, the role of the family was as the media, the aftermath of the Ashura to be uh, taken and to deliver this message to the world. Mm. In that time, until today, and to the uh, on the day of the on the last day of of this world. Mm. Um, I'm looking at this idea of um, knowing God. So I'm going to ask a pretty profound question in a way. Um, we know that every time a, a quote-unquote new religion starts, it might start off well, but after uh, some time passes it goes in a different direction than what God or the founder of it intended. And we know Islam had a, had a similar path there when it came to what the messenger intended versus what happened. Um, so we know that the Islamic tradition was completed um, just before the death of the Prophet through the announcing of uh, the Imam as, as, as the next leader. Sayyid Mohsin, is it too profound for me to say that without Ashura, we would not understand the correct version of God himself? You couldn't say any better. No, it's definitely 100%. The revival of the religion depended upon Imam Hussein, Salaam Allah. Salam, for him to have um, to give his sacrifice in order for us to receive the correct Islam we have today and even those who have a different madhab rely and should pay homage and honor Imam Hussein because if it wasn't for Imam Hussein even their version of Islam wouldn't ever exist today and you're bringing it back to like you know the Tawheed and you're bringing it back to Aqidah and, yeah. and, and theology and 100% definite that you know this was a stance against theology because Yazid, we know he wasn't a man of religion but a man of his nafs, of his own desires and he would openly mock Rasulullah he used to get a monkey and dress him up and put him on a member and say look that's Rasulullah and he used to, it was open mockery of, of, of the religion, open mockery of the he used to have Juma prayers on a Wednesday Mm. On Wednesday, he would make him perform Jummah prayers, mocking the religion. He had no, you know, form of, you know, I was saying, Allah is khawf al khuda. No fear, of, fear God of God or his actions. And it was because of Imam Hussein that everything was revived and everything survived. And definitely, without a doubt, we must always remember, even though Imam Hussein stood up for many things on, on that day, he stood up for the walai of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Mm. He stood up because there was those who were praying on that side 
and it was those who were praying on, mm -hmm. on his side with the Walaya and, and the, the importance of that, you know, your religion is not complete without the Walaya of Emir al muminin and that's one of the most important factors and that's one of the most important stances that Imam Hussein mm -hmm. stood for on that day mm -hmm. in Karbala. Um, Brother Imran, I've, I'm in different parts, uh, places I've spoken to, I've, I've used the phrase sometimes that people find God in different places, could be in a place of worship, could be in prayer. I found God in Ashura. What, where, what did you learn about God from the moment of Ashura? So I think um, with something like that, it is very important to um, you know, also point out the idea of tawassul that we have. Yes. Because that comes into play a lot um, with, uh, with a question like this. So when you, um, you, know, when you go through life, um, just generally put, put uh, aside religion, for example, a sport that you like to play. For example, you like to play football. And um, you, know, you see one of, your, one of the best players in the world, Steven Gerrard, uh, well, we'll put it out there officially, mm -hmm. that he was. And um, so anyway, so you, you find him as a role model. And you will follow him in his footsteps. So you will be like, I want to play like him. I yes. want to do this. You know, you watch him play, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and you know, you, uh, you build that respect for him uh, through that. Now, bring it to, uh, for example, let's bring it to Ashura. You see the um, the, the acts that Imam Hussein did. Um, for example, um, when it came to Hur, mm. Hur was responsible for blocking the water from his family, okay? Now Hur then, um, you know, had a change of heart and he came to Imam, you know, cutting the long story short, came to Imam, asked for forgiveness, etc., etc. Now if someone had come, done that to your family, stopped food, water for days, how on earth would you be like, you know what, I forgive you. Mm. Okay, let's, you know, now you're with us. So for Imam to have the patience, to have the, the bigger heart, to accept her to say you know what Hur, you are forgiven you are now on our side to do something like that it's again it's not comp you can't comprehend it it's mm. again very much easier said than done mm. but to know that there is someone on the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does that is there any other path you need to be on mm. if someone does something like that that's so humble that's so uh, you know it really brings your ego down mm. is there anyone else you want to be like other than Hussein. Mm. So he would be that role model. He would be uh, who you find God through. Mm. But it's, you know, and, and again, uh, other people find it through the wasl, like I was saying. So, you know, when you ask um, Allah for your dua, you always ask Allah for dua. You know, this is, this is the point we have to stress upon. When you go to, when we go to Karbala, when we go to, um, you know, Masjid Nabawi, when you go to Hajj, etc., we pray to the Prophet, we pray to our Imams to fulfill our hajjad, but it is always through the imam to ask Allah on, on, on our behalf. Yes. So that's the, you know, it's importance of the wasl, if you know the viewers who are unaware of uh, the concept, it's not that we pray to our imams to ask them to fulfill our needs, but it's to ask them to ask Allah on our behalf to fulfill our needs. So again, you can find through God, mm. if you f find God through uh, that method also. Mm. So. Thank you. Um, Yes, so we'll wrap up uh, this discussion now due to time, although the legacy of Imam Hussein can be discussed for another 1,400 years, as you mentioned uh, earlier. We would like to thank our viewers at home uh, for watching this show today. And to help continue the message of Imam Hussein and continue his legacy, um, I'm of the opinion that we don't need other people to validate Imam Hussein, but it's always nice sometimes when other people talk about Imam in a glowing way. Uh, one that comes to my mind is where uh, the famous mystic and founder of the Sikh faith, Guru Nanak, uh, calls Imam Hussein the conscience uh, of the human being. And the fact that his legacy can be seen in other walks of life and parts of the world uh, is a manifestation of his legacy itself. And if we want to learn about God, there's no better way to learn than through Imam Hussein. As it was mentioned, if you want to learn about the mercy of God, look at the way Imam was merciful towards his companions and the people who opposed him. We're going to end this show as per usual with some eulogy from Brother Imran. Please, Brother Imran. So, so um, this uh, poem is a very, very, very popular one. Everyone knows it. And I believe um, for the discussion, it, it's, it's absolutely perfect. Bismillah. Bismillah. Every day is Ashura, every land is Karbala. 
This is the call of the Shia. This is how they give the bay'ah. This is the oath of allegiance till Al Mahdi's reappearance to the progeny. What do we say every night and every day? Shall we say together? Every day is Ashura. Every land is Karbala. The path that Hussein provides, he teaches us and he guides with his greatest sacrifice. We learn words alone don't suffice. Words and actions are the key. That's what Hussein wants us to be. Every day is Ashura. Every land is Karbala. Hussein did not compromise. For God's pleasure he did rise When he did not give his hand He wanted us to understand For Islam we raise our voice And disregard all of the noise Every day is Ashura, every land is Karbala. Karbala shook all the worlds, it cannot be described in words. It shook the throne of the tyrant, it kept Every evil silent, it is the school, it's the way every Muslim should live each day. Every day is Ashura, every land is Karbala, every day. Ashura, every land is Karbala. Salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.